Today, NVIDIA's new GPU is outselling everything. NVIDIA's RTX 6000 card is insanely expensive. 13th gen Intel owners need to watch this, and Ryzen 7000 X3D parts are officially even better. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we have some sales data that was shared by Tech Epiphany and comes from the German retailer MindFactory.de. And while it's only from one retailer, it obviously gives us an idea of sales in other places as well. It's really just one of the only places that makes this data public. Either way, it's from the third week in January, and as you can see, the RTX 4070 Ti is the top selling GPU. And not only is it the top selling GPU, but get this, it actually sold better than the 7900 XTX and 7900 XT combined. Even if we include Intel's ARC GPUs, it still wins. With that said, the 7900 XTX did outsell the 4090, but Nvidia's top-end GPU has been out for a while at this point. Of course, the 4070 Ti is the cheapest of the next-gen cards, but as I went over in my comparison video, the 7900 XT tends to do much better in pure rasterization, and even some with ray tracing turned on. So the 7900 XT can be worth it, but the 4070 Ti isn't that bad in comparison. The real issue, I think, is just that GPU prices in general have been skyrocketing. For example, the 4070 Ti starts at $799, while the 3070 Ti had a launch MSRP of $599, and the 1070 Ti started at $449, so it's nearly doubled in just a few generations. Sure, the 4070 Ti is quite powerful, but double? That's a hard pill to swallow. So I'm assuming that gamers are simply buying buying the cheapest next-gen cards they can, which is understandable. The issue is that further down in the lineup we go, the worse it looks. As you saw in a recent video, the 4060 Ti is rumored to only be as fast as the 3070, yet is set to be somewhere under $500, and the 3070 launched at $500, so two years later we're looking at roughly the same performance for maybe a little bit less. Next up, I know I talk about them a lot, but if you want to learn computer science, they really work. Sure, Brilliant sponsored this video, but I can't recommend them enough. For those who haven't heard, Brilliant is the go-to learning platform for all things STEM, and that includes computer science. Whether you're a beginner just trying to understand the fundamentals, or you're already in the field, Brilliant has amazing courses for you. But what separates Brilliant from the rest is that they make learning interactive and fun, because they teach you by getting you to do it yourself. From making and running your own code, to playing around with the decision box, Brilliant teaches you how and why things actually work the way they do instead of just memorizing some formula. But don't just listen to me. Try Brilliant for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And the first 200 of you who sign up will get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. So check them out today. Next up for today, NVIDIA officially announced the retail availability of their newest RTX 6000 GPU, more specifically their RTX 6000 ADA GPU based on their ADA Lovelace architecture. And with that announcement, NVIDIA has officially announced the price of 60... Ugh. Uh, 6800 oh my god, $6,800. That's terrible. The GPU is set to replace the RTX A6000 and comes with 18,176 CUDA cores, so nearly 1,800 more cores than the 4090. It also comes with a whopping 48 gigabytes of EEC GDDR6. Surprisingly, it's rated at a very impressive 300 watts, but once again, we're looking at an unreal $6,800 which is a huge price jump from NVIDIA's last-gen RTX A6000. And obviously, while it has more memory and a bit more cores than the 4090, gamers should not look at this as a gaming card, please. Next up, for anyone with Intel's new 13th gen CPUs, or even 12th gen depending on when you bought it, you need to see this. According to a new story from Tech Power Up, Intel's new i226-V 2.5 gigabit Ethernet controller has a serious flaw, and as of now, there's no fix available. The new part comes on quite a few 700 series boards and is an update to the i225-V Ethernet, which ironically had a flaw itself. The good news for that one was that that you could fix it by forcing it to use 1 gigabit speeds. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case for this new chip. 
As for what's wrong, the controller seems to be plagued with random connection drops that last a few seconds. As Tech Power Up mentions, this isn't a big deal unless you do things like, oh, I don't know, online gaming? Basically, this is a big deal, and there's really only a few ways to fix it. For one, you can move to Wi-Fi, though if you're using Ethernet, you likely want what should be a more reliable connection. Then if your motherboard has a second network interface, and third, your option is to buy a PCI Express network card. Of course, these aren't aren't all that expensive, but after spending potentially hundreds of dollars for a nice motherboard, it's obviously absurd to be forced to buy a part for something that should already work. To check if your LAN connection is doing this, Tech Power Up goes through what to look for. Either way, let's hope motherboard vendors can find a way to solve it short of mass recalls. And lastly for today, we have a huge story on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000 X 3D parts. But before I get to the story, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on all things PC hardware. According to AMD's own website, when you look at the specs for each of the upcoming X 3D parts under Unlocked for Overclocking, it says yes. And this is shown on every single part from the 7800 X 3D all the way to the 7950 X 3D, which means the most powerful gaming CPUs could get even more power powerful, and this is a big departure from their first 3D vCache part, as the 5800X3D wasn't able to use Precision Boost Overdrive or Auto Overclocking, much less Manual Overclocking. Well, some BIOS did seem to support PBO, but it definitely never got real overclocking support. Well, apparently the 7000 parts will. Up until now, it had been reported that AMD would only support PBO and Curve Optimizer for their 7000X3D parts, but this obviously goes against that. Now, with that said, if you remember not long ago, AMD published a release date of February 14th for their X3D parts, but the company quickly removed it and issued a statement that it was a mistake. Of course, I'd bet that it was originally the date, but it was just pushed back. Either way, that could be the issue here, but I'd assume that AMD wouldn't make this mistake yet again. I mean, remember that this is AMD's official spec pages for their X3D parts. They're on AMD.com. It's not just some leak from an unnamed source or anything like that. So at least as of now, it's official that AMD's Ryzen 7000 X3D parts will be unlocked for overclocking. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 7000 X3D, or are you having issues with your Intel Ethernet controller? Let me know down in the comments below. And definitely make sure to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!